Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel for CraftWorldEldar.com. I'm Brent and this is the unit focus video on Dire Avengers and their associated Phoenix Lord, Azerman. In these unit focus videos, I talk about what the unit is, its role on the table, obstacles to using it effectively, and how best to play around those obstacles, but also loadouts and overall competitive viability and not necessarily in that order. So what are Dire Avengers? They're aspect warriors. You probably all already know that Aspect Warriors are Eldari combat specialists. Each Aspect Shrine specializes in a very particular battlefield role, and Dire Avengers are sort of quirky in that they are maybe in some sense the least specialized combat specialists. They are also, in the lore on most craft worlds, the most numerous, as in there are more Dire Avengers than there are any other type of Aspect Warrior usually there are exceptions. Ibrisol probably has more Banshees. Maybe some Han has more Shining Spears. I don't know. But in general, it's true. Broadly speaking, it's true. Ozerman, uh, their Phoenix Lord, is the first and oldest of the Phoenix Lords. He is the, the Phoenix Lord who, after the fall of the Eldari, after they threw a rager so crazy that it birthed a new Chaos God and nearly extinguished their species... Ozerman was the heroic elf who created the path of the warrior and taught all of the other phoenix lords. And to avoid boring people who are only here for tactics, I won't follow through on my temptation to start going off about paths. There are some pretty good lore videos floating around on that, and I need to make some lore videos for this channel. But one thing that it is, uh, I think, sensible to know and understand is that phoenix lords are sort of strange creatures and that they their their armor in some sense is their personality so Azerman is still running around in the current present tense of the 40k timeline and he was running around right after the fall of the eldar but it's not actually the same elf every time the elf that is Azerman dies that elf's spirit stone is added to the armor that the the elf who is Azerman wears and all of the spirit stones in the armor inform the consciousness of the elf who is currently Azerman, such that there's some sort of consistent personality and memory and identity. So when you become Azerman, you don't totally stop being yourself. You just, but you also just kind of like become part of the thing that is Azerman. But in any event, uh, Azerman is a, a badass. He's the great granddaddy of the entire concept of the path of the warrior and kind of the progenitor of all of the aspect shrines and in some sense all of the other phoenix lords were his disciples first at least all of the ones that are currently in the in the lore i don't know if we get a striking scorpion phoenix lord maybe there'll be some other story but i kind of doubt it not that we'll i'm sorry i mean warp spider phoenix lord we have a striking scorpion phoenix lord okay so uh roll on the table uh dire avengers are theoretically small arms specialists who jump on objectives and defend them from enemy infantry with pretty good shooting and really good overwatch. And also just kind of generic shooty anti-infantry specialists, which is weird because specialist and generic are at odds, which is perhaps why they've been in a little, little bit of a tough place in 10th edition. I think the only aspect shrine that has been included less in Eldari lists that have done well in GTs probably is Shining Spears. And this is not because Dire Avengers are bad, it's just they have struggled to find a role for reasons that we will get to in a bit. But theoretically, what they want to do is be good at ranged infantry elimination, particularly like light to medium infantry, and to hold objectives with very threatening overwatch. And Ozerman is just an absolute durable beat stick that wants to uh, help them do that and is quite a powerful melee counterpuncher. And I think I just, I need to start by saying that Dire Avengers are a solid B-list unit. That is, if you if your goal is to win a GT, I think you probably don't want them currently. Maybe that'll change after we get our, our codex next year. But they're, they're a really solid unit. They're, they're pretty good. And I think that there are a couple of ways to use them both in... Uh, mid-table play and club play that are absolutely viable 
And so if you if you just if you like the models or you own a ton of them because they were amazing in ninth edition and you, you still have 30 of them or because you're running Belton and you want all of the aspect warriors or, or whatever your reason might be like they're pretty good. They're pretty solid. But the, the fundamental problem that they run into, which we'll talk about when we talk about obstacles to using them effectively, is virtually any single thing that you can do with them. There's something else that probably does the job better and the places where they shine most. Uh, well, they, they tend to be roles that just haven't been as valuable in this edition and other editions. And they also might be paying the price a little bit for having been absolutely off the hook, disgustingly good in ninth edition in combination with Bladestorm. A big unit of Dire Ventures could kill like anything. And so they, they may be sort of in the penalty box um, a little bit for that also. Okay, let's take a quick look at the unit card. It's really quite simple. They have the standard uh, Aspect Warrior profile with the 7-inch move, the Toughness 3. They've got the 4-up save, so Aspect Warriors all either have, like, the Light Armor or the Heavy Armor. They have the Light Armor, the same armor that Guardians have, except that, like all Aspect Warriors, they have a 5-up and Vulnerable save. They have 1 Wound, unless it's the Exarch that has 2, 6-up Leadership, 1 OC. They have an Avenger Shuriken Catapult, which is better than a Guardian Shuriken Catapult. Uh, like the Guardian Shuriken Catapult, it's an assault weapon, but this one also has lethal hits. Ooh. Uh, it has the standard 18-inch range, three attacks, though, instead of two attacks. And then other than that, it's like the Guardian Shuriken Catapult. So they hit on three, strength four, minus one AP, one damage. And the Exarch can either have two Shuriken Catapults, or instead can run around with some melee weapon and either a shuriken pistol or uh, a shimmer shield. And I think that if you do decide to do the melee weapon, you're going to do the shimmer shield, but the melee weapons are not, they're not the move. Uh, the regular Dire Avengers just have close combat weapons. It's the standard non-melee aspect weapon that's just strength three, no AP, one damage, but two attacks instead of one. Uh but the Exarch, theoretically, instead of an extra shirt and catapult, could take either a Dire Sword or a Power Glaive. Both have three attacks, both hit on threes. The Dire Sword is only strength four, but has devastating wounds. The Power Glaive is strength five, but does not have devastating wounds. They're both minus two AP. They both do one damage. If you were going to take one of these, I, I think you could pr practically flip a coin between them. But generally... You want the second Shuriken Catapult for the simple reason that you really don't want your Dire Avengers to be in melee and not having an Avenger with two Shuriken Catapults and instead of having a, an Avenger Exarch with no Shuriken Catapults really rather significantly reduces the shooting profile of the unit, which is the thing that it wants to do. So if you're all at all worried about competitive play, I think you don't you don't take the you don't take the melee Exarch. And frankly, the the weapons aren't that good. You know, maybe if one of them were a power fist equivalent, maybe you'd want to like think about it, but that's not where they are. And then they have a single ability, defensive tactics, uh, which just means that they hit on fives with Overwatch, unless they're standing on an objective, and then they hit on fours with Overwatch, which which theoretically could be pretty good. But these have to be unmodified dice rolls, which means that if you have the Phoenix Lord lead them and they get the plus one to hit, it doesn't actually help with the Overwatch thing, which is a bit of a bummer because I think. There's any number of small ways that Dire Avengers could be made better to be made tempting and letting them have modified dice rolls for Overwatch with defensive tactics would be like one of them. But currently, that's not a thing. You can run them as a squad of 5 or a squad of 10. They're 70 points for 5, 140 points for 10. I personally think they should be 130 for 10 because uh, doubling the side of the squad doesn't actually double the fire output because the Exarch only happens once, right, with this extra weapon. But those aren't bad numbers. A 70-point squad by Eldari uh, standards is is pretty cheap, so if you have a unit of five of these things running around with six shuriken catapults, they put out 18 shots uh, with lethal hits, uh, which means that on average they'll get three, and then minus one AP, one damage, which means that they're um, really good into light infantry. They'll kill guardsmen. They'll kill other Eldar like there's no tomorrow. They'll kill termagants. And uh, because of the lethal hits and the volume of fire, they, they'll also put a couple of wounds on a vehicle or a monster, which is cool. If it doesn't have a two-up save to start with, if it's like a three-up save, 
they can generally ding it for like two wounds, just a, a squad of five can. And um, they've also got the grenade keyword. So for a CP, they can throw a grenade and that's cool too. Gren grenades have an eight inch range. It's a stratagem. Um, you can't throw them if you advanced since, I don't know, like June. And so theoretically, a, a squad of five of these things is uh, kind of a disposable action monkey with better than average small arms fire that can put a couple of wounds on a hard target if they get real close to it and throw a grenade. They can put like five wounds on a hard target, which is actually actually really good. They're good into other light infantry. They can do actions and in theory just become this kind of like pretty solid all-purpose aspect warrior that has a three up in cover and a five up in vuln and you don't really need to worry about losing and can't quite be ignored by an opponent but is also not a big threat and that's one way to run them as just kind of a disposable uh all tool and then the other way to run them is to have them actually be some kind of a threat you run them in a squad of 10 and then they put out 33 shots which can be no joke Especially if uh, they're jumping on an objective and they're putting out 33 shots, hitting on threes, and then on your opponent's turn, after your opponent moves, they're putting out 33 shots again, hitting on fours. And if you want this to actually be a combat unit, I think you kind of have to lean into that defensive tactics uh, ability. In, in th if you make it work, right, in theory, uh, putting out 66 shots over in one battle round um, should make them pretty good at uh, 140 points, even if the second half of those shots are coming in at minus one to hit. So theoretically, this is a squad, if you're going to run the larger squad that wants to like run on to a midfield objective while also having enough models in a terrain piece to get cover and like squad on the objective and shoot an opponent and then force your opponent to contest it and shoot them again after they move. You could also theoretically uh, start that larger unit in reserve and bring it out of reserve on a board edge and put 33 shots into something. And again, with the lethal hits, the lethal hits are big, right? Because um, with 33 shots, you should get like five auto wounds. And then if you are shooting again with Overwatch, you should get another like five auto wounds. So theoretically, they can, you know, ding even something that's pretty tough. But if you really want them to do some work as like a front line return fire jump on an objective overwatch unit, you put Ozerman in the squad of 10 for another 115 points. And now it's a 255 point unit, but it's kind of good. I don't know if it's 255 points good, but it's kind of good. Ozerman has the standard Phoenix Lord stat line. He has a 7-inch move. He's toughness 3. He's got the 2-up save with the 3-up invuln. Now, the 3-up invuln's big. There are not a lot of 3-up invulns left in the game, which makes him uh, one of the more durable character models available to Eldari. He's got the 5 wounds, the 6-up leadership, the 1-OC. Uh, like all Phoenix Lords, he makes his associated aspect shrine if he joins one of their units uh, plus 1 to hit. So it doesn't work for Overwatch. They can hit on twos. And then he has this other ability, Tactical Acumen. Once per turn, you can target this model's unit with the Overwatch stratagem for zero CP and do so even if you've already used that stratagem in a different place uh, on the board this phase, which is kind of a big deal because one of the problems that Dire Avengers face is there's usually other stuff you want to use for Overwatch. And having Azerman with them uh, gets around that. So now like... They're hitting on, you, you You have 33 shots with the Dire Avengers hitting on three twos on their turn. And then if they're towing an objective on fours on your opponent's turn uh, with the lethal hits. But then Ozerman adds his shooting. He has these like relic shuriken catapults on his wrists, like wrist rocket shuriken catapults uh, called the Bloody Twins. Which, because there's two of them, right? They, they, they have six attacks. They have the same assault and lethal hits. They hit on twos. They're only strength four. They're still minus one AP, just like a normal shuriken catapult, but they're flat two damage instead of one damage. So they're pretty good into space marines. So if he's leading 10 Avengers, that's like, goes from 33 shots to 39 shots. But 
uh, six of those uh, those shots are two damage instead of one damage, and he's also adding that fire again, um, doing Overwatch theoretically on your opponent's turn, and then and then that's pretty good. But his best weapon is his melee weapon, the Sword of Azur, uh, which has six attacks, hitting on twos, strength six, minus three AP, flat three damage with devastating wounds. Devastating wounds, people. Really good. So you can push some through with a fate die if you need to. And this means he's good. And he's really good into like Terminators, which save on fives and then just like auto die if they fail a save. Uh, He can put like somewhat reliably uh six wounds on something that's really tough because maybe he gets like one devastating wound through and then maybe your opponent fails like one armor save because he's got good ap and the the synergy the synergy here that's intended is clear i think like he the dire avenger thing is they have better overwatch and his thing is that he lets them do it for free so the the idea behind the whole Avenger package is clearly you shoot and then you shoot again and that's why they're good. Uh, you could also run Ozerman with a small squad of Avengers and a Falcon and be able to reroll the wound rolls coming out of the Falcon, which helps you get around the strength four on the shuriken weapons. They jump out of the Falcon, they shoot a thing, they charge into combat with that same thing. The thing Ozerman cuts it up with the sword of Ozer. Maybe he throws a grenade. Now they're now they're pretty good theoretically they work a little bit like fire dragons would with fugan but uh they're a little bit more all-purpose because they're good also into numerous infantry or you could run Ozerman on his own taking up the sixth seat in a falcon that's carrying around some other five elf unit that doesn't have a leader and if you are going to do the thing where you jump on an objective with uh 10 of these elves and possibly also with Ozerman. You may very well want to think about, so they've got a three up save and cover. They've got the five up and vulnerable save. And for one CP, you could use lightning fast on them to make the minus one to hit. And units like this can be sort of annoying for an opponent to deal with because they, they your opponent doesn't want to shoot at them with really good shooting because they are what they are. They're just these infantry models and they've got the five up and vulnerable save. But massed small arms fire will struggle into them because the three up save and cover is pretty good and being minus one to hit is pretty good. But they will still die to like torrent weapons that have minus one AP or enemy weapons that ignore cover and have minus one AP and still come in at good volume of fire. That'll that'll put them down pretty fast. I will say that if you're doing the thing where instead you're holding the whole unit in reserve and you're bringing it on at a board edge, if you do find yourself shooting something that's like really big and tough, like a greater demon and relying on the lethal hits, uh, it doesn't really matter that you're not touching an objective if you're planning to like shoot on your turn and then shoot again on your opponent's turn because you're going to trigger about the same number of lethal hits anyway. Ten Dire Avengers, again, they'll trigger about five lethal hits in your shooting phase and then maybe another five in your opponents. Although, unfortunately, if you're bringing them in out of reserve because of the eight-inch range on the grenade, they're going to be too far away from the target to throw a grenade if they are targeting something really tough. So I think that's probably generally not going to be the move. I really think the best way to play them is either as a 70-point action monkey, like pretty good generalist units, or you do the 10 elf thing and maybe you add the Phoenix Lord and you, you tow an objective, probably not in the center of the table, like maybe an objective on a flank so you're not taking ridiculous amounts of shooting from your opponent's army. Uh, and maybe this is a unit that's like going to be disproportionately recess, resource intensive for your opponent to try to eliminate and then you have a, a counter puncher to follow up once you lose your 130 point unit of Avengers, 140 point unit. Okay, let's talk um let's talk obstacles. Uh and I'm going to talk separately about obstacles with reference to each of the roles that they can perform. So, if you're running the 5 elf unit of Avengers, the greatest obstacle is anything that you might want to do with that unit. There's something else that you could do it that thing more effectively with. So, like if if what you want to do with your 5 Dire Avengers is actions well. 
uh, most secondaries require you to perform actions in a variety of locations on the table. And so dire ventures are just a little bit too slow to be really optimal for, for that. You're probably better off spending just five more points and getting a Viper that's like really quick and also more durable and also can have a heavy weapon. If what you want to do is infantry elimination, um, well, honestly, swooping hawks and warp spiders also have pretty good infantry elimination. Hawks don't have any AP on their weapons, but they put out more shots with better range and also have lethal hits and are also quicker for performing actions, getting around the table and have a redeployability. And spiders are like the fastest unit in the whole game and have torrent and devastating wounds and d6 attacks and as far as being able to multi-class into damaging really tough stuff well we have a lot of things that are better at that about that point value for damaging really tough stuff striking scorpions are better into heavy infantry and the the range the shooting range on the dire avengers is limited enough that you can probably get there with scorpions Banshees are exactly the same cost and they can advance and charge and they have the same strength as the shark and catapults and the same fire output, but they've got minus three AP. Dark Reapers are 15 points more and can reach across the whole board with their shooting. And uh, Corsair Void Reavers are 10 points cheaper, so they're more disposable as action monkeys, uh, but have melee damage output that's not terribly different from the shooting output of the Dire Avengers. Now, I, I have to acknowledge that in theory, there is at least one situation in which for the points, Dire Avengers could really be a lot more efficient. And it's maybe not fair to connect, uh, compare them to a unit like Warp Spiders, which is significantly more expensive, right? Warp Spiders are... You could you could get another unit almost for the, the cost difference between the two, but... Theoretically, if you had Dire Avengers sitting on an objective, ready to trigger Overwatch, and you were playing into an opponent that was relying on pushing forward with light to medium infantry, then in this case, Dire Avengers would be more efficient than all of the other things that you could have in the role for the points. The problem is that the way 10th edition has shaken out, that just isn't how people are playing. Uh, most players are not grabbing midfield objectives with infantry, like light infantry early. Perhaps the only example of this, um, orcs kind of do it. There are a lot of T5 orcs running around, and the lethal hits do help with that. Like, Dire Avengers are actually good into orcs. That can be. They can be pretty good into orcs. And orcs are really scary, so there, there's that. Um, and they're good into, like... Uh, Swarmy Tyranid lists, although um, Swarm lists have gotten a lot less popular. The, the, really, the way the edition has gone, um, more or less since the beginning, is that um, tanks and monsters and super heavy infantry uh, are like the anchor units that are grabbing objectives in the midfield and bullying stuff around. And infantry are kind of like fighting other infantry and performing actions unless... Those infantry are specifically like anti-hard target specialists like fire dragons. But I, I think there was an idea at the beginning of 10th edition that there was kind of going to be like a, 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 a tank battle going on and also an infantry battle going on. And they were going to be laid over the top of one another, but they were kind of going to be different things. And GW's worked really hard in 10th edition to make sure that, there, that no unit is good into everything. And theoretically, Dire Avengers would be a unit that multi-classes, multi -classes, but I think they've maybe sort of caught it on the chin a little bit with reference to this aspect of the game design, which I actually think is a good aspect of the game design. But um, because they are generalists and they're not optimal into any specific thing, they struggle a little bit for the same reason that, like, missile launchers struggle. You don't really want Eldari missile launchers in your list because... Uh, Bright lances are better into hard targets, and like sure, mass shuriken cannon fire on bikes is better into intermediate targets. And the, the there's better ways to kill infantry than like a 
an anti-infantry missile out of an Eldari missile launcher. So you just don't see the missile launchers, and I think that Dire Avengers are kind of having the same issue. Whereas the problem uh, Azerman runs into is, although he is good, although he is good, uh, his best profile is a melee profile, and your Dire Avengers doesn't don't want to be in melee, so it's he's like not making the most of his own combat utility if he leads the squad. And theoretically, he could like lead the squad until the squad dies and then go melee aggro. But him ever getting to do that is is a question. The three up and vulnerable save is good. It's very good. But at the end of the day, he's a T3 model with five wounds. So he, he's he's not as durable as Fugan, right? F- Fuegan. Somebody got real pissed with how I was saying that in the uh, video about fire dragons. I will just throw out there that most of the most of the Phoenix Lords are pronounced, their names are pronounced differently by people who work at GW. There's some things that we know are wrong, but it, in any event, that's neither here nor there. The point is that um, if, if you're choosing between Azerman with his three up and vulnerable save and another Phoenix Lord who uh, has a four up and vulnerable save but a five up feel no pain and resurrects on death on a two up uh and also has comparably good melee and better shooting into hard targets it's a little bit hard to justify taking the dire avenger granddaddy also if you don't have the model don't buy it it's going to get a we, we know for sure that this is one of the models that's getting a refresh in 2025 so unless you're a collector and want it for that reason it's probably not a great time to spend uh, 50 bucks on eBay on this, or I don't know what it's going for on eBay, but it's an old model. It's from the, it's from the nineties. All that said, I really, I really do think that if you, if you like dire Avengers, uh, their flexibility at 70 points for a a small unit, that's going to do actions. That's going to shoot enemy infantry that you don't really have to care about losing that can screen deep strikers is not, is not bad. And the lethal hits really make a difference. They do. And if you really want your Dire Avengers to fight, uh, running 10 of them and putting them onto a midfield objective and planning to use Overwatch on them is... Also, your opponent's probably not going to expect it because nobody uses Dire Avengers. Like, I think you could get a real kick out of doing that in a few games, especially if you have the Phoenix Lord in there and they're doing it for free, and then it's kind of an annoying unit to have to deal with it really is a threat they're just a really solid bb plus and i also think that there's something to be said for um if you're if you're coming back to the game and you haven't played in a few editions and you're dusting off your old elf models and you own a bunch of dire avengers i think that these are not a bad pick for people who are really new who are playing s- sort of semi casual casual club games trying to figure out what's going on because although as a, a generalist unit, really high skill cap, highly knowledgeable elf players might find them limiting because you can think of three ways to to do the thing more effectively. Uh, I think for people who are not necessarily planning two turns ahead with encyclopedic knowledge of everything, maybe Dire Avengers are a little bit easier to get some good use out of than... Something like, I don't know, Striking Scorpions, which are almost the same points and can be really good and also can be basically useless if they're not played in a kind of nuanced way. And before I wrap it up, I, I just want to talk about a couple of ways in which I I think the Tire Revenge, I'm really hoping, they're, they're not bad, but I would really love to see when the Codex comes out for them to see, get some little thing that takes them to next, the next level so they can really do the thing that we want them to do so here, here are just a couple of things that i think would fix the squad I, I don't know if any of these will happen but i think that because dire avengers have been so underrepresented in 10th edition so far it's reasonable to hope that their unit card might get some kind of little boost when we get the codex so for example the the, the notion that the exarch gets to multi-class into a melee weapon i've i said i've said this before i've been saying this actually since like eighth edition i think it would be really cool if uh the dire avenger xr could take the two like two shuriken catapults but also have 
a dire sword on his back or one shuriken catapult and a dire sword or a power glaive and make that weapon a little bit better like kind of a power fist equivalent and i think that it would be really cool if the other dire avengers all had like a highly mediocre version of the dire sword so it was it was truly an all-purpose unit where they had their shuriken catapult fire but then they had a melee weapon that was kind of equivalent to the shuriken catapult like maybe not as good as scorpions obviously can't be equivalent to howling banshees or striking scorpions but let's say a bit better than like dark reapers and fire dragons i think if they could uh fire overwatch for free without having azerman and still hit on fours and fives respectively especially if their range was slightly increased that would probably do it or if they had the, I was actually hoping that in uh, ninth edition, before the ninth edition codex dropped, I was hoping that they would get the ability that ended up going to Wraith Guard in tenth edition, where they could shoot back at something that shot them on an opponent's turn, like in addition to maybe shooting Overwatch, which would make sense with the whole Dire Avenger thing. They're Avengers. They, when when they get damaged in some way, they retaliate. Or if there were just a better synergy with some stratagems. So the old move with Dire Avengers used to be Bladestorm, and it's just not good enough. The current Bladestorm stratagem, you spend a CP, and on critical wounds, your armor pen gets better. So their armor pen would go from minus one to minus three. But that's only on critical wounds, and it's actually currently working at cross purposes with having lethal hits, because then they're making fewer wound rolls. So just access to a better Bladestorm equivalent of some kind, I think, would probably also do it, especially if it only triggered off of shuriken weapons. I kind of think that whatever the Beal Tan detachment is in the Codex, maybe it'll be called Swordwind, uh, will probably, we'll probably have something like that. And maybe that's what it's going to be. Maybe there's just going to be some sort of uh, stratagem that fixes this when, when we do get the Codex. Because currently they're a bit hard to, they're a bit hard to really get there, even though they're not bad. Um, and I just want to close out by saying, I, I know that uh, James Kelling Boone um, from over at Goonhammer, who's also been a guest on the channel a couple of times, I know he's a big Dire Avenger fan, and he's tried to get them to work in some big tournaments a couple of times, and tried to fit Ozerman in, and has said that he just hasn't ever quite been able to get them to quite do the work for him. But I also think that sometimes. Players who listen to online content overly worry about hearing that a particular unit is not like top table, top tier competitive, which really doesn't matter if that's not the 40K that you're playing. And that's really just not the 40K that most people play. And I think most of most of the people listening to this video probably could get perfectly good use out of uh, Dire Avengers, either as MSU somewhat disposable action monkeys or larger units that grab a flank objective on the more lightly threatened side of the table and punish enemy infantry for trying to close in on it backed up by some other unit that's planning to retake the objective when they die so that's what i've got on everybody's favorite bog standard blue aspect warriors I may be uh, switching over next week to to do a lore video. I had said about a month ago that I was going to start leaning into lore videos a bit more and just like non-unit uh, focused videos as we get closer to the Codex because this stuff will be quite possibly much less relevant soon, which is exciting. But if there is a, a unit focused video that I haven't hit that you particularly want to see that I haven't done since the beginning of 10th edition and isn't like rolled into some other thing like my video about Beltan or my video about Sam Han, feel free to let me know. Uh, or if you have your own ideas about how to use uh, Dire Avengers or Ozerman effectively, you could talk about that in the comments below or you could just click like and subscribe. And if you're feeling very generous indeed, you could come over to the Discord. We've had a bunch of new people join the Discord in the last few weeks, which is so exciting. It's uh, only three bucks a month to be part of that community. It really does make a big difference to to me in terms of creating new content, uh, and I, I really appreciate it. And special thanks, as always, to my uh, sponsor, the Magnet Baron. I own so many of your magnets. You're the reason I own three Wraith Knights and not, like, five, which would be even more indicative of a problem. Okay. Uh, I'm out. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I will look forward to talking to you again next week, and I would love to see a couple more people join the Discord by becoming patrons. I'll link that in the video description. Thanks. Take care. Bye.